The Wolverine NTW, the most competitive airsoft gun out of the box with no upgrades. I have played and tested with the Wolverine in some of the hottest climates, dangerous airsoft site in the world, abandoned hospital Kempton Park, South Africa. There's one in the bush there, taking a knee, I don't think I'll reach him for me. The coldest climates and severe storms. Everywhere. It's crazy! Dense jungles. Oh, nature everywhere. I'm in rag. Yo. They're red. I've had some of my best airsoft moments using the Wolverine. It's almost too good. Here are some of the best clips with the Wolverine MTW. Run out amount of rounds that you can get down with this toy. With the speed, it's just a match. It's so overpowered. God. And it's never let me down. So, how did they achieve this? We are flying off to America to play at Milsim at the Guardian Center, but first, we head to the Wolverine factory and get our guns built. This, if you can't hear me, because we're in the Wolverine factory right now, lots of big machines, and the toy guns, they start as a block. And they go through this machine, and then they end up like this. And how long does that take? I think the first two... Uh, ...on this side, and then they flip it over and machine it on the other side. Uh, I want to say the first two ops take, like, 25 minutes per piece. So we're talking fours. This is the forging. So this is the same foraging that you'd make an actual AR-15 out of. Right. We just machine it differently. So the difference between billet and forge is billet starts as a solid block and we machine all the geometry. Forge starts with your rough geometry in the foraging and then you just do the finished machine. So that's your form. And obviously all made in the USA. America, fuck yeah. How much is this machine worth? <laughs> How many Lamborghinis? Yeah, that, that one's not as much as a Lamborghini. This is a small machine. I, I think the list price on this is about 100, 100 pounds, something like that. So that's the finished product. This is a forged upper receiver. This will get um, this will get a little bit of cleanup to take all the sharp edges off. We try to minimize the amount of handling, yeah. so we spend a lot of machine time cleaning up all the sharp edges. But there's always a few things you can't get to with yeah. the machine, so you have to finish up by hand, and then it'll get sent off for surface finishing. That's what that machine is making. So that giant machine makes this. Yeah. Uh, we have. So that's what you need to make this. Yep. So these are these are a really sensitive part. Yeah. Um, we take a lot of pride in our regulators. He'll actually every single one will get inspected. 
I show them this sort of the inspection process. Make sure that this round surface here is is exactly the same measurement every single time, I'm guessing. It fluctuates a little bit, but only within a few thousandths of an inch. A measuring microscope. So what that lets us do, the the flat surface on the end of this piston here, uh, we hold that the width of that surface to between three and five thousandths of an inch. And just like he's doing there, measuring how how wide that surface is. Wow, that, that little piece is what sets the stock extension. Yeah, so it's just so when, you, when you're running a race. You, know, you collapse the stock, put in a new car, a capsule. You, you don't want to have to like mess with resetting the length of pull. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this just has a, is a hard stop. So you can set how, what's the maximum extension length. And then you just collapse it, change your capsule and just that one, little, that one little yep. bit, and that comes from that that, that machine. Yep. So, do you like recycle this? Then, do you repurpose that? Oh yeah, I'll show, we'll show you that. Dump, dump. Oh yeah, look one there. That's even. That's a small one. That's, that's, the, that's steel. Wow. We don't do a ton of steel. Holy, sh holy shit! Yo, that's you don't want to fall in there. That would. Uh, would... This is aluminum. It's not too bad. Aluminum generally. Speaking, oh okay. I, do you know what? I thought it was going to be like sharper and more abrasive. I, it, this is a finished part, ready to go to anodize. It's called a washing machine, but it's it's actually called a spinner. This uh, is more metal cool, in there. But what it is, these are magnetic pins. Wow. There are big ma electromagnets that sit underneath here and spin around in a circle. And then, hey, Robert, can we turn the washing machine on for a second? Okay, so. Whoa, 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 whoa. So you can see it kind of tumbles it around. If you put your hand in there, you can, if I don't hurt you, you can feel the, the things. Whoa. Feel the pins spinning around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The magnetic pins get spun by the big electromagnets underneath here, and they they just act as like a little abrasive. Yeah, I understand what you mean. That, that is crazy science, yeah. that, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty fun. Who thought of that? So we just went to the, the factory, you could say, right, Pez? Where they, they make the NTWs. Interesting, the machines are Haas machines. If anyone watches F1, it's the Haas. same. It's Haas, 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 wherever the f so interesting, like really interesting. You don't really realize how much goes in to just yeah. making the final NTW that comes off the line. Like there must have been six, seven, eight different machines in there, all doing something very meticulously programmed, inch by inch, millimeter by millimeter. The basics built, we now head off to the assembly line to finish our toy wrists because they are just toys. Insert winky face. So I'm here today with Elijah, and what's your job, Elijah? My job is QCing the guns. All right, so this is typically what you do, you stick in the battery. I'm sticking the battery for forge, especially for the billets, we usually have the, uh, the line sticking outside the gun, so we don't have to mess with that in QC. And how many guns truck can you Q QC a day? Usually at most, about two batches, which would be 60 guns, roughly. Again. What ra on what range is that? And and it's that's, that's easily hitting the back. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, what things, what things do you check for? Like, what are your like, top three things that Top three things, I guess for these ones, we've been having issues with devil feeding, which we'll check for that, we'll check for bad grouping, and we'll check for no jewels. So, grouping looks good, had how many devil feeds, and I put this one about 1.77, and our, which passes for this one, see so it's 1.7 now, it's 1.95, and this one's good. So that gets a pass. Massive, isn't it? He's let rip in his room, you dirty bastard. What was that? Got there a solid six. Actually, you know what? I'd go with six like there. And then we get some Tommy K on there. Yeah, chip six out of ten. Excessive boss. Go on then, get down, yeah? Which, I, need, I need a rating. I'm gonna give it eight. Okay. At the event now, can't wait to use the Wolverine and get stuck in. Week one, day one. We're so dead, bro. It's like, I feel like we're about to get f***ing nods, but we're in the Christmas tree. Look, look at this. Look at this shit. It's like f***ing Ibiza back here. <laughs> <laughs> are fighting the greens for control of the map, each player gets two heals using pretend tourniquets. Green here, green here. Keep running, keep running. In, in, in. Got 
This next clip perfectly demonstrates just how ninja you can be with the Wolverine. No whiny engine, no big blast sound effect. You can literally creep right up to people and take out entire teams on your own. Next video, we use a collapsible samurai sword. See you then. Not kill, not kill, not kill, not kill. Gore-Tex shoes never flow in wet. Solomon vibes them and know they dead. TM416 Delta, never CQB when I blow their head.